we need a lot of study, including the study in these head of trenches. Because of lack of equipment, scientists cannot access that region. So I need a team to develop that system as quick as possible, provide the tools to the scientists, let them make a complete survey of all the trenches, yes. then understand the whole ecosystems. If we can use this kind of philosophy to replace the current materials, the philosophy, uh, uh, main of the social problems can be automatically solved or disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? What's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host Alan Sakian. We are on site at the beautiful Westlake University in Hangzhou, China. We are now going to be talking about deep sea technology. We have Dr. Wei Chung Cui joining us on the show. Hello. Hi, Wei Chung. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Yeah, yeah, really nice appreciate it. it. Yeah, I'm so excited for this. For those who don't know Wei Chung's background, he's professor and PI at Westlake University researching deep sea technology to provide research tools to scientists to understand and explore our oceans. And you can find the links in the bio below. Wei Chung, let's start things off with one of our favorite questions. We like asking our guests. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the general direction of our world? Okay. And uh, in the last uh, 200 years, our science and technology developed very fast. And it has changed uh, dramatically to our uh, uh, everyday life. And uh, initially, people always think science and technology can bring the happiness to our human beings. But uh, as uh, the society develops, uh, go on, uh, for like my own observation was uh, still like the, the, there are a lot of people still uh, living in high pressure and didn't feel so happy and the gap between rich country, poor country, rich regions, poor regions in one country or different people. So then even rich people have some of the problems they face. Poor people also have some problems they face. And uh, so basically I find uh, now I'm question, I have the question whether science can really bring the happiness to our human beings, can really solve the problems, the environment problems or the disputes between different countries, different nations or different religions. And I, I find that science actually is limited and uh, maybe the fundamental reason or the cause is uh, uh, philosophy. Mm. Can we s find the sort of uh, uh, a way of, you know, of the common value of human beings? And actually, what are our human beings? What's uh, the perfect direction for, uh, or to be a, how to assess, to be a success of a human being or something? Mm -hmm. And uh, quite a lot of questions cannot or have not been addressed in science. Yes. And this is related to the uh, philosophical questions or something. At the moment, it is seems that uh, people are more favorite on science and technology. Ignore what people, quite a lot of people think philosophy is not important. So from my own point of view or observation, our world or our human beings, we are all mid lost the right direction. We are maybe go to the long directions or something. And uh, at the moment, the person who like uh, can uh, uh, destroy the earth, more and more people have the power yeah. to destroy it. Then other people are just live under the risk of this individual person, if they lost their temper, 
<laughs> well, they are fighting each other. Yeah. Maybe certainly it affect other ordinary uh, people or something. So uh, how to <laughs> solve such kind of uh, issue? Yeah. It is since maybe more important than just uh, further developing the science and technology. So if we look back at when mm. we first discovered fire, yeah. we can use the fire to help us cook you the food. Yeah. Um, we can use fire to so. burn villages. You can so it. immediately the philosopher mm. was needed you to say, it. please yeah. cook just food. Don't burn the villages with this. You you it. Know? And so now fast forward yeah. millions of years later mm. to modern day civilization. Yeah. And we have exponential technologies, nuclear bombs, biotechnologies, nuclear, uh, neurotechnologies, yeah. artificial intelligences. We need philosophers yeah. at Google, mm. Facebook, Apple, LinkedIn, uh, Amazon, uh, Tencent, Alibaba, Baidu, yeah. uh, all of the big companies Com in the world need big staffs of philosophers, ethicists, you could have moral that. scientists. Yeah. And this can ensure that maybe instead of making technology that helps mm. wealthy people become wealthier, yeah. which we'll talk about in the show, mm. that you can use some of these great deep sea technologies yeah. to pillage the oceans and take the no, the for resources. myself, the resources, or we can use them to advance science and understand ourselves and our oceans um, better and, and share the benefits yeah. with the world. So I love your focus on this and, mm -hmm. and I th we'll return to this, to this topic again. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about your journey. How yeah. did you as a child get mm -hmm. interested in science and okay. the oceans? Yeah, great. that's a uh, great question. And as a matter of fact, when I was a boy, so I say after junior high school, we will go to the farmers. We never have the chance to go to university or something. So during that time, we ne no hope to be like the well educated. And then near the last or end of uh, my junior high school, only half a year left. Then the Cultural Revolution uh, stopped, and uh, our country go to uh, like a new period started to have uh, uh, equi uh, like the, the, uh, the entrance examination, who can go to the high school and then go to university or something. So given me only half a year, I have seen the chance. So that is the first time I started to have my dream. And I plan three steps. First, to be go to the, the high, middle high school uh, in our country. Then second step, go to university, to be a university student. And then finally, to be a scientist. So during that time, in my uh, impression, scientist is the most, is the, well, the, 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 the greatest person I can even admire or something. And then I study hard, and uh, I step by step went to the Middle, go to middle high school and went to the university, actually uh, to the Tsinghua University, one mm -hmm. of the best university in China. In the university time, then I spent some time to read philosophy, mm -hmm. read history. And uh, then actually uh, during that period, after I thinking uh, what actually society, from observation or something, I gradually uh, was set up my uh, 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 through the reading, through the thinking, and actually I found my uh, idol or the person I actually admired, mm. uh, Mr. Li Sotong. Mm. I taken him as a life master. So what uh, I wanted to have a life is a life like him. So in that case, scientist is not my final target. Mm. I wanted to be a person like him. To, to be a useful person to the society, to the people. And uh, I do not uh, care what the profession I, I, I was asked to do or something. His uh, personality basically two uh, characteristics. One is very kind 
to the society, to the people. Yeah. Only do good things to the people. Second is do everything he, if he uh, wanted to, to be the uh, very uh, best or to be the, the, the perfect or something. So one is very uh, care to everything, to be very careful to, to do it uh, best. Second is uh, I only do those things that would be beneficial to the society, to yes. the people, not myself. Yes. So that's actually the two uh, fundamental qualities. And nowadays, uh, from my observation, I think uh, like uh, scientists, maybe only pay to one aspect. I want to be the best to science or technology. Do not care how to use your result or something. Uh, if you pay the, to me, either by politician or by a rich person or something. And uh, then I receive the payment, I do the uh, scientific development. But uh, I think in that case, advanced scientific tools could be misused. Mm -hmm. And uh, for my admiration or something, wanted to be a scientist like Einstein or something, if I find this guy maybe misuse my research product, I should refuse. Uh, yeah, even cost my life. I do not want to be uh, something. So basically, like uh, such kind of person is the one I admire, rather than a pure I enjoy. I can solve the technical problem. I don't care uh, in other things or something. Yeah. 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 <sighs> so this is really cool that if we have a very deep ethical grounding in our lives that we can really be vigilant with what we accept as um, as friends as money as um, all different types of um, of what is being added to our lives we can basically have a filter and say that i will not accept the what i'm what what value what scientific advancement i'm making into the world if you're going to use it inappropriately to cause violence yeah um i i like that a mm -hmm. lot and it's really interesting how even in your youngest years you began caring a lot about that and it's mm -hmm. very evident that it's here with you um now mm -hmm. also I think that's actually really important for young people that if uh, you, if we can have them uh, at younger ages care more about philosophy and ethics and these types of exactly. leaders, then mm. later in life it becomes without a question these types of, I like that a lot. Mm. So what about um, when you did mechanics and then mm. you did structural reliability at the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom, mm. um, what were you studying about yeah. Yeah, the technology. Okay. So th that's because it's my that attitude. I actually very flexible to the environment, I was that. I was uh, uh, to be chosen China Ship Scientific Research Center to be the place I started my master's degree and uh, but uh, lucky enough I uh, started I got the chance to be sent to UK for study PhD, study my PhD. But that scholarship was awarded by British Council. Basically, they uh, can respect your sele select of the, like the total Navy architect or something. But they can also allocate you to another university or another. So they allocated me to the Imperial College in the Civil Engineering Department. So in that case, okay, I have to start uh, did my PhD in the civil engineering systems. And uh, after that, uh, of course, uh, I spent 18 months in the college, then transferred to Bristol, finished my PhD in civil engineering. So that subject, uh, because at that time, first set of theory or something quite a new mathematics or uh, ideology, I chose that subject. But after that, I wanted to, to uh, get some experience on postdoc research. My supervisor do not have the project funding to support my continued research. So I found another advertisement to work on composite materials in aerospace engineering. So I just popped in to speak to the professor, your project, I can do it because my 
previous background is solid mechanics. So after that, I actually did three years postdoctoral research in the Department of, Department of Aerospace Engineering. Mm -hmm. But uh, so during that period, actually, I, I did a lot of work on composite materials or something. If, according to my own preference, I worked in that area, it's much better. But I had the agreement with China Ship Scientific Research Center. This they gave me the chance to study in the UK. I have the responsibility to return back to that institute to work for them. Mm. So after three years postdoctoral, I went back to China Ship Scientific Research Center mm. to start to start my research as a lab architect. Uh, you're still now an adjunct professor at Shanghai Ocean University. You started there in 2013, though, mm -hmm. and um, you were doing project lead in the research and development of Hadal Science mm -hmm. and Technology Movable Laboratory. Yeah. Now, we need to talk about the Hadal trenches because mm -hmm. these are trenches that are deeper than 6,000 meters. Yeah. They're pitch dark, there's no light, mm -hmm. and they're kind of the last unexplored frontier yeah, on yeah. Earth. Yeah. So why are you so fascinated with that zone and what were you doing at Shanghai Ocean University and okay. still being there? Yeah, that's a, a, a good question. The first is that uh, I treated myself or regarded myself. I was a sort of a top level scientist. Uh, I should do all these challenging tasks or frontier work. And uh, then what do you find? Uh, uh, for the Jolo, we reached the 7,000 meters. But at the same time, James Camelo developed a uh, uh, 11,000 meter many submersible. Mm -hmm. So for our technology uh, field, from 7,000 meters to 11,000 meters, is a certain uh, direction. That's what I wanted to do. Secondly, develop this submersible also very useful for the society, for the human beings, because uh, Deep uh, head of trenches is the uh, least explored by our human beings. We still don't know actually how deep is the challenge deep, whether there is a fish or not in these deep trenches. Was a, was a, there are a lot of curious questions we don't know. And also, maybe very soon or 10 years, 20 years later, our human beings will explore the ocean resources. But in what speed, in what method, we explore this, explore, uh, explored this ocean resources, we are not destroy our ecosystem or something. We need a lot of study, including the study in these head of trenches. Because of lack of equipment, scientists cannot access that region. So I need a team to develop that system yes. as quick as possible, provide the tools to the scientists, let them make a complete survey of all the trenches, yes. then understand the whole ecosystems, then you can assess, such as in our China, South China Sea, if we are decided to exploit certain type of resources, what's the consequence, what's the effect, will affect this ecosystem, something. We can answer this question. We will not bring such as a very bad consequences to the society or something. Mm -hmm. So I think that what we also one is to demonstrate my idea. I, any kind of team I can lead, I know the management method already, and to attack yeah. this challenging technical problems. Yeah. Second, the tools I developed is useful for the ocean scientists. They can use that to do some useful work to help the society. So that's actually the motivation. So yeah. like if you manage the resources and the, the people and processes in effective ways, you can get more science done effectively. Exactly. And then also, I like how you focus on being able to take the scientific advancements that you achieve mm -hmm. in the field. It requires really good engineering skills, too. You have to yeah. engineer the submersibles to be robust. Yeah. And then you take 
that tool and democratize it to scientists around the world yeah. so that they can research the Haddle zones okay. and understand life on this planet more deeply. Mm. I like that that process for you. And so, okay, so now let's talk about these um, these differences in mm. um, in our unexplored oceans and how we're um, mm. exploring them. So you guys have about 14 people in the lab here at Westlake University. That's right. And you're, there's so, there, let's break this down. So there's a couple mm. things. Let's start with this. There's the human occupied vehicles. Yeah. Okay, so that's HOVs. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, unmanned underwater vehicles. That's right. UUVs. U -U -V. Yeah. And under unmanned mm -hmm. underwater vehicles, there's AUVs, which are yeah. autonomous yes. underwater vehicles, vehicles. Yeah. and ROVs, which are remotely operated Imagine. underwater vehicles. So that still requires right. a human, but behind the computer. You, you could actually. And so what are the differences between these? I mean, they do mm -hmm. all different types of missions. Um, we were talking about um, Remus, which yeah. goes and, and does the um, the, um, the mine sweeping, so it's finding yeah. all of the old uh, yeah. mines from the wars and, and mm. destroying those, which it can actually terminate and discover and terminate underwater mines in one square mile in 16 hours, yeah. whereas uh, it used to, this is only a three foot long robot, mm. um, which it used to take dive, teams of divers and it mm. used to be less safe and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But um, we also do things like map submerged wrecks, rocks, Mm -hmm. um, uh, we do things like just uh, s scan mm -hmm. our ocean floors, look for um, samples, yeah. um, and take them back. So mm -hmm. let's talk about the different okay. vehicles, submersibles, mm -hmm. how you yeah. design them, and what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. So basically, yeah, you're right. Manned, unmanned, two types. Unmanned can be divided into AUV, AUV. So basically, AUV it means uh, without any cable. So you can to do a wide area survey. So the basic tool is the lights and the videos, cameras, mm -hmm. so just a record of this, uh, the, the, the wide area information. And if you want to do some focused work to take uh, samples or something, then you use the remote operated RV. Such as, uh, RV has a long cable to uh, transmit the uh, power to the submersible. So basically have a long, uh, unlimited use of the power or something. But the point is because of this cable, it is harder to move wide area. So it gets me first this particular size or something, and then you op or, or remote operate it as a manipulator mm -hmm. to get the sample or something. But the cable is there so it doesn't get lost. Uh, unless the cable is broken. <laughs> so cable. cable is broken because when you are doing the recovery or doing operation, you have got some sudden city uh, happen, could be lost. So we are, a lot of RVs also get lost. It's AUV, expensive. Yeah, AUV, you pretty programmed. Yeah. But if some uh, unexpected situation happened, then change the program, they go to other directions, then far away from your ship you couldn't receive any signal from it, it will be lost. So basically, unmanned submersible has a high risk to be lost. Yes. Then also, the manned submersible, you manned inside, you can to do the very defined work, focused. I can focus from window, operate my manipulate or yes. something. Yes, yes. And then they can actually freely uh, uh, like the sailing or something. So you can wide uh, can work it in a wide area. I done this work, done that work, done that work yes. area. So, but you need oxygen, food, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So basically, like the three different type of submersible, each has disadvantages, mm. disadvantages. So basically, a good set of tool is a combination of a, a system. If that work can be done use AOV, that's the cheapest use AOV. If that work can be done use ROV, okay, use ROV. If that work needed to be defined, the work needed to be used HOV, then you send the HOV down. And uh, maybe in the evening, you use your AOV, ROV. In the day, also put your main submersible there. And also they can work collectively. Like the, the AUV go around yeah. 
and uh, also you show how the ROV, how the HUV are doing working or something. So this uh, combination of tools, that will be very ideal. Look out all the comprehensive information for the scientists. You know where, which place you, uh, did the sampling, how do you get the sampling or something. Because otherwise, if we use only mental submissions we are doing sampling, we know the code of others. How do you did the sampling? Which actually the location were yeah. nearby uh, 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 top, uh, topography or something. Yeah, so that's, that's why the main idea, why I had the called a comprehensive investigation system. It's a combination of uh, unmanned submersible, manned submersible. And now for the unmanned submersible, actually it started in the what's called the new concept, hybrid unmanned submersible. Mm -hmm. So one submersible, you can either convert it as an AUV or uh, operate it as an ROV. Mm -hmm. So just in the ship, this time I use a cable, this, that time I without a cable, it's an AUV. Mm -hmm. So one submersible has two modes of yes. work. Yes, That's yes. A, 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 a very economic. The human can maybe remotely operate it when you need a very precise exactly. movement or yeah. resources yeah. to grab. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, for these submersibles, you still work on the batteries. The battery can only last, uh, say, 10 hours or 12 mm -hmm. hours or some limited uh, time. Mm -hmm. you, and uh, in the deepest part, such as if you want to uh, catch the fish or look at the behavior of fish, you don't know how long fish will come or something. So if you want to uh, stay in the button for a longer time, then land is the cheapest means. So that is why we also developed some sort of very economic, very cheap means, lenders, like this uh, camera system. Mm -hmm. We salute into the button, we can work there for one week, yes. one month, even a year. That's uh, no problem. Set down the code yes. the long time. So if you want equipment to, s uh, to be installed uh, on the same button for a longer period, then land is the cheapest means. Yes. Yeah. So yes. that is why, as yes. you see, my comprehensive system. I, I design is a have uh, several 11,000 meter landers, one unmanned, hybrid unmanned submersible called the ARV, autonomous and remotely operated vehicle, and one HOV, and then spe uh, one specific ship for this equipment yes. to be operated. Yes, yeah. yes. The landers are so interesting too because they have uh, glass spheres for buoyancy, yeah. and then you can drop them down mm. 11,000 meters, and then they have different, like you said, you can add video cameras, exactly. you can add sampling ability, so I can yeah. sample from the floor. Exactly. Um, so we can conduct science for months or years at a yeah. time with these landers exactly. and then resurface them afterward yeah. um, instead of these limitations with the battery powers, exactly. which, I thought, which I think is a really interesting part of what you're talking about. Mm. Now, um, Wichang, what would mm. we want to be finding? Like what's the, no what's the top, let's say, mm. three reasons yeah. that we, you know, the oceans, I think, what is it, 95% unexplored? Exactly. Yeah, and 70% of our planet is oceans. And 95% unexplored. Yeah. And it's, and uh, below how many meters, there's no Six light? Uh, well, no. basically about, say, uh, uh, f uh, 500 meters deeper, there's no sunlight at all. No sunlight once yeah. you go 500 meters deep. Yeah. And the deepest is Mariana Trench, yeah. which is... 11,000 uh, 11, meters. meters, yep, okay. Yeah. So what, why, why, and this is, you know, next to, usually next to the land, mm -hmm. the continents, yeah. is a little bit the shelf, the sea shelf. Exactly. And then it goes down the deeper. Yeah. So we can find different things mm -hmm. on the sea shelf exactly. um, than on the very 11,000. Mm -hmm. So 1,000, 3,000 meter different than 11,000 yeah. zones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why, what do we send the submersibles mm. to find? What are the top three things we send to find? Okay, um, basically, uh, I'm not a, a scientist like to do the ocean uh, mm -hmm. 
science. You're the technologist yeah, that technology builds builds the so, landers and the yeah. Up to science. now, yeah, our yeah. human beings' uh, capability, such as uh, less than six thousand meters for the ocean, basically we got some tools uh, to do the exploration or something, uh, scientific research means. Uh, but uh, below the six thousand meters, there is uh, very few or little. Uh, equipment for that. Mm. Uh, the what's hole, United States, you developed the, the NELIS, uh, unmanned submersible yes. uh, in, uh, successfully in 2008. Uh, it lost in 2014. Mm. In Japan, there is a Keiko uh, uh, ROV developed in 1995 and get lost in 2003. Mm. And uh, James Camelon developed an 11,000 meter manned submersible. Mm -hmm. But that one only for type one's exploration or something, or, or just uh, mm -hmm. taking the, the like Guinness record or something. Mm -hmm. Not very useful for the scientists. And uh, so uh, the scientists still don't, uh, at the moment, don't have uh, access tools to the uh, head of trenches. Mm -hmm. So this more or less gave us, uh, uh, or China, a chance you know, to be the leader in that area, to develop or make some contributions to that area. So that is uh, my dear wish or hope. So I want uh, for personal reason, I find there is a gap there. Yeah. If I can provide an uh, operational manned submersible, the first operational manned submersible for the world scientists, Yes. That would be a big uh, personal achievement or yes. something. Yeah. Yes. So that is uh, my main motivation, say, yes. five or six years ago, well, well, I started. And uh, mm -hmm. then I work on that. Yeah. And you, we, yes, you're a tool builder for yes. deep sea technology. But just give us an idea, like, mm. what would the landers okay. be finding or what would the submersibles be looking for? Okay. Top couple things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, there are a lot of things. One is uh, like you get the uh, first, uh, basically, the, the, uh, the survey of the sea button, say, uh, geography, image, yes. and uh, the, 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 the map, or resource distribution, or anything yes. like that. Second, you get some somebody in particular taking uh, uh, the, the ocean or the sea water yes. and uh, then sediment yes. you know, the, the button, yes. what kind of structure, what kind of... Uh, the, 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 the Serving, uh, then sampling. Sampling of anything you start yes. uh, the action. And say currently one of the focus with the, our plastic pollution Mm. has been affected to the trench. Yeah. So the, 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 like the creatures in the trench, whether they are uh, polluted by this plastic, and it is now confirmed, even the uh, amphipods in the uh, oh, Mariana no. trench, yeah. inside the stomach, no. there is a plastic bag. No. It is already been confirmed. So basically, uh, like the how severe the situation, and also you, you can study the the impact of like the uh, uh, atomic nuclear waste if you put it inside the, the, the cafe. And also you could rescue and recovery like the loss of the MH370 or something. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of submersibles to <laughs> make the survey yeah. Uh, yeah. where the airplane crash. Uh, yeah. If you also for the rescue, for the say the uh, Mexico, you know, oil, a platform accident or something, yeah. you need a lot of uh, equipment, uh, yes. uh, submersibles for rescue. So I think uh, the, that uh, then you saw archaeology or tourist or uh, anything. So actually, uh, also uh, find the lost bones in the ocean, or you, you get a cheat, uh, uh, yeah, uh, disposal of this, uh, the, 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 the bombs uh, in the ocean, uh, like the left uh, for the Second World War or something. So there are plenty of work can be done by these uh, submersibles. And our human beings are lacking of this kind of tools because they are not easy to be developed, cost quite a lot, technology very challenging. Only a few people can do it. So, so that, that, that's actually uh, quite a, yeah, yeah. very useful. Yeah. Yeah. 
Wow. So we need to sit, we need to survey first mm. our entire ocean floor yeah. um, with high quality video exactly. and uh, just geographical, geological mm. research. Yeah. We need to sample the different sediments, the different uh, ocean life as yeah. well down there to catalog it. Maybe there's unique things like GFP yeah. uh, came from the jellyfish. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there's other unique aspects of biology yeah. that we can use in understanding neuroscience or uh, the cell yeah. in general. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so we need to do that. Mm -hmm. And then we have this, um, I like how you also said there's like, um, there's we can deploy the different technologies mm. uh, like a suite, like a yeah. big suite of deployments. So mm. it's not only the landers, but it's the landers and yeah. it's the autonomous ones and the human operated ones exactly. and the robotic ones, all this type of stuff. Mm. And then also there's there's wrecks that need to be explored. If we want mm. to understand the archeology, span the record of how humans got here, yeah. we should go look at some of the seafloors. There's interesting things down there exactly. about how we, the microplastics is a little bit, it's it's a little gross. We we mm. are um, hopefully evolving fast enough to realize that we come from those oceans and that we need to stop yeah. um, polluting them. Also, the um, uh, somewhere in the range of seventy percent of all mm. of our carbon sequestration yeah. exactly. is from phytoplankton. Yeah, phytoplankton. But yeah. also about fifty percent of the carbon may be uh, located in this head of trenches. So all this, uh, the area is very small but the carbon content actually occupied quite a high percentage wow. of the, this carbon cycle, yeah. cycle or something. Interesting, so it could yeah, be that, it yeah. could be that and these, the, these ocean ge yeah. geothermal and geological um, it, vents and exactly. produce yeah. a decent amount of the, the carbon cycle process. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Uh, understand the earthquake mechanism. Oh yeah, the, that's, that's that head of change is also very important, yeah. Wow, so some of the, the, the tectonic plates we usually only study on the continents, exactly. but when you look at the ocean floors, those... Um, those uh, the junctions, junctions of the two yeah, continent yeah, plates, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, then the energy for, uh, accumulated in that area to a certain level, it became a big earthquake or something. Yes. So maybe these places are the first places to be detected there where there is a big earthquake or, or, or something. Yes. Yeah. So that's yes. an ideal place for studying the earthquake or something. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. Wow. Wow. Mm. Wow. Okay. That's so interesting. Okay. So mm. why don't you um, also teach us about like, mm. um, what is, um, what is kind of like the, where you see this heading? Mm. Like, um, maybe in 50 or 100 years, mm. let's say. Yeah. What would be your ideal mm -hmm. uh, way for us to go and uh, survey mm -hmm. and uh, sample yeah. uh, the oceans? What would mm. be the ideal tool or technology? Okay, uh, from my uh, point of view, such as the technology, say another five years or 10 years is uh, matured to uh, explore the oceans or something. Mm -hmm. And if you spend some cost, uh, every country uh, get, get pay some, something, yeah. get more submissive yes. to do the survey. Because uh, this is a tremendous working load. No one country can afford to do all that. And this is benefited to all our human beings. Similar as, uh, you know, like uh, the, the, the map to the uh, land this uh, competing map for the ocean. So basically for this, uh, if you want to uh, complete a survey of one trench, say Mariana Trench, maybe it cost uh, uh, one year ship time or something. Yeah. So it costs quite, uh, quite a lot. And there are like more than 40 trenches or something. So if we only one, have one system, one ship, maybe it takes 40 years or something. Similar as our human beings gene project. If we uh, uh, were yes. organized together, you made you survey this change, you survey that change, we put it together, yeah. maybe another 10 years or something. Yeah. Can be. So now, actually, the main problem our human beings faced 
can we really work together coordination. for the coordinate for the yeah. same target? Yeah, it's very difficult. I like that. Yeah, uh, for our like reduction of the carbon dioxide, yes. we initially had an agreement. But yes. if one country blocks, yeah, then yeah, you can. Yeah. And uh, for this, how to organize like the United Nations or some yes. organization yes, yes. playing more loose to do that or something. Yes. Yeah. Like the so, ocean cleanup project or the like the ocean exactly. mapping project. Yeah, yeah, this it, type it, of it, stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So we can make the all the ocean transparent, similar as you uh, working on the load or something. And like the human genome. Project. Yeah, genome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, can, yeah, can do that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this uh, with the, this organization or someone come to be lead that project or something. Open so, source the yeah. oceans for yeah. scientific, open science yeah. notebook style you, you exactly. research. Yeah, like the Argyle project or something. Yeah. They already has some project to be done, but uh, for this head of transit, we also need, without that kind of organization, this could take takes 40 years, 100 yeah. years or something, or whether we don't, can finish or not. But uh, the, another risk is, uh, Really, for for me uh, to see for our human beings is how to avoid the wars, either yes. local or global. Of course, the Second World War, because if yes. if the two leaders or three leaders, they are not happy with each other, they started fighting and then divided it into two two parts mm -hmm. and fighting each other or something. So our as our human beings, actually, no one can destroy ourselves only ourselves. <laughs> so, exactly. yeah, yeah. So basically, such a... Oh, uh, an asteroid. Yeah, an asteroid. Yeah, right. yeah. So the, basically, like, the, only our human beings, like, uh, every country respect each other, they live harmoniously, and then we uh, try to solve the uh, environmental issues, any kind of issues or something. That's uh, under that condition, all this science progress, then we exploit the ocean resources to make people uh, live much better, uh, to, uh, to improve our situations, let the, uh, all the poor people can survive, can live a better life or something. Yeah, so that's what, from <laughs> my point of view, that yeah. is more important I agree. than purely technology yeah. progress, science progress. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the importance of our relationship to nature. Let's yeah. talk about yeah. this because mm -hmm. um, in order to avoid more war and suffering mm -hmm. and uh, and issues with our lack of ethics or philosophy, yeah. if we dive deeper into where we come from, mm -hmm. where do we come from? We You go back, 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 back. We all come from yeah. a single source yeah. and that source is nature. Mm -hmm. and, and we breathe the air, we eat the food, we drink the water of yeah. the planet, of mm -hmm. Mother Earth, of this beautiful planet. And it's also interconnected. Mm -hmm. There is no air that I breathe that you yeah. don't breathe. You can have it. And so when we see it that way and mm -hmm. we connect to nature more, and mm -hmm. if scientists, yeah. especially when you push the frontier of knowledge, this mm -hmm. edge, further and further, if you have philosophers or ethicists yeah. or moral scientists working with you of these big tech companies, these big governments around the world, it's easier to collaborate you and it's it. easier to uh, remember that we come from, we come with this at yeah. the same time ev with evolution. Mm -hmm. So how do you see the human relationship with nature, especially mm -hmm. with our oceans and how does our disconnection from that mm -hmm. affect yeah. the issues we have in our world. Yeah, so that is basically, uh, I had uh, quite a lot of thinking about that. And uh, now what I find is that uh, actually that's a, a great mistake in the 20th century. Yes. And uh, the materialist uh, philosophy yes. dominates. Yes. And actually this philosophy, scientifically, now we ha can have a lot of questions to that this is not a very scientific, have a lot of paradoxes about that. Yes. But that didn't address like the, the relations, who am I, what's the relation, I with the other people, with the animal, with the nature. So more or less separated. But as a matter of fact, we should 
just uh, have a sort of uh, another philosophy is uh, uh, this uh, harmonious system. I can live better only if my environment is better. My environment includes other people, yes. like uh, this, uh, the, the, the one of the skin of my body or something. Mm. So in that case, if you treat the whole earth, mm. is my body, yes. and everyone or every life on the earth is part of my body, or my cell yes. or something. In that case, okay, can be like the really if I, well, most people believe in that kind of philosophy, then you can get harmonious, get really, the, 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 with nature or something. But otherwise, it's said, oh, we are fighting for the resources. If I kill you, then all the resources belong to I become rich, I can divide myself better or something. So in that case, you know, make the people really, should I say it, really greedy, uh, want to, like, the, you become. Uh, well, I like this, uh, can only do better sacrifice of others, and no one can want to be sacrificed. So they want to fight against uh, the survival or something. So in that case, like uh, this is a, a very big uh, uh, mistake. Or in this, uh, the, the, the philosophy, what's the actually the value? Or how to assess uh, good people? Uh, by the people or something, get rid of this without the, this humans greedy or something, yeah. and it's very hard to get harmonious with the society, harmonious with the people. From my philosophy, there's no enemy at all. Right. Enemy was born from your heart. Yes. You regard someone as my enemy, yes. his enemy. I treated as a, a friend, he's my friend. Yes. Yeah, so similar as I will love animal, love dog, yes. snack, anything. Because if you kill one kind of spe species, it will affect others. It's uh, this, uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. cycle, can be this Butterfly effect. Yeah. The, okay, 10 million species right now on the planet. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them can be thought of like a cell yeah. in an organism. Exactly. And so there's heart cells, muscle cells, bone cells, exactly. blah, blah. And so yeah. it's very important to remember mm -hmm. to be very, very careful with this ecosystem that gives us life, yeah. that sustains us, mm -hmm. that is all interconnected. Now, I want to talk about this too. So. Um, this has now been said over and over again. Mm. This idea that we must slow down. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard because a lot of people want to speed up, the speed up technology, can, speed up science. It's very important. And mm. we agree. It's mm. important to push the science and technology. Mm. But if you do it without long-term thinking, yeah. seven generational thinking, seven exactly. generations out, mm. you risk causing serious issues exactly. because if we do the genetic engineering mm -hmm. of a way of disease, mm -hmm. this is of course we understand this is important, yes, yeah. can we also really mm. consider what will happen seven generations out exactly. with this process? Which so, I, mm. Thank you. Not at all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> okay. so much okay. for coming it's on our pleasure. show. It's a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure to talk about it. It's yeah. been such a pleasure mm -hmm. talking to yeah, you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Have more conversations with your friends, families, coworkers, people online about the things we talked about in the episode about deep sea technology, about all of the different styles of underwater submersibles and about their importance in understanding our oceans and also about ethics and about philosophy and about spirituality and about nature, about all the things we talked about regarding that as well. Check out the links in the bio below to Wei Cheng's profiles. Also support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations around the world that you believe in. Support them and help them grow. You can support Simulation. Our links are below. So we can continue doing cool things like coming on site to Westlake University for incredible interviews with leading professors, principal investigators. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. 
Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Yeah. Great. Wow. <laughs> Okay, yeah, 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 thank you. Okay, thank you.